Hello, Chemistry 11 Honors. This is Mr. Chan. And today what I wanted to do was talk about something called photo emission spectroscopy or PES and Coulomb's law. Now, photo emission spectroscopy, it is also known as photo electron spectroscopy. And what it does is that it sort of reinforces some of the concepts or some of the ideas that we had talked about back in Chemistry 11 when we did the atomic theory where you talk about you know, the electron configuration. What's happening with the electron configuration? All right, so you have 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p4. This idea of the wave mechanical model was, so, was sort of confirmed with this photo emission spectroscopy. Now, what it is, is it's used to measure the energy of electrons that are emitted by solids, liquids, or gases by this thing called the photoelectric effect. So what is the photoelectric effect is when electrons are emitted from atoms when they absorb a specific energy or a certain amount of energy from light. So if we were to look at the diagram on the right here, if we were to emit some light onto the surface of an element, what you get is you get a discharge of electrons. Now, what happens is this discharge of electrons is then sent through a machine like a mass spectrometer, okay? And what happens is you get a spectrum that sort of shows you the results of the electrons that are given off. And so what you get is you get a spectrum like what you have here on the right hand side. And the electrons, what you get is you get distinct peaks at different energy levels, at certain energy intervals. And this idea confirmed that electrons existed in certain orbits or in certain energy levels. The height of the peaks also supported the idea of different orbitals being able to house a different number of electrons. So in this case, what you would get is you would get in some distinct peaks like here, here, and here. And it represented different orbitals, like the 3s, 3p, and 3d. And notice the height of the 3s, 3p and the 3d, there are distinct differences in height, and that would represent the number of electrons in each of the orbitals. Now, one thing that you'll notice here is something called the Be. So this Be is the binding energy, is the energy required to remove the electrons from the orbital. So you notice here the 3s or closer to the nucleus, if this was the nucleus on the left, notice the 3D has a lower binding energy <coughs> than the 3P, than the 3S. The 3S in this case has the highest binding energy. And this makes sense because the 3S is the closest to the uh, nucleus. It's the most strongly attracted and therefore would take the most energy to be removed. Now, why does binding energy decrease as one gets further and further away from the nucleus? And the difference is in, in energies is due to the idea of Coulomb's law. Now, what is Coulomb's law? Coulomb's law looks at the forces between two charged objects. And one thing about Coulomb's law is this. As the distance increases between the objects, the forces and electric fields decrease. Conversely, as the distance decreases, the forces and electric fields increase. So there's an inverse relationship between the distance and the amount of force. So the bigger the distance, the weaker the force. Okay? Now, the force between the objects can either be positive or negative, depending on whether the objects are attracted or repelled to each other. So this force 
can be measured by either the force of attraction or the force of repulsion. Not only do, is it the distance that determines the amount of force, the size of the charges can also determine the amount of force present in between two charged particles. Now, we have taken a look at Coulomb's law before. If we went back to, let's say, thermodynamics, remember we talked about lattice enthalpy, okay? And lattice enthalpy had talked about something about the um, Coulomb's law. And I think if we had looked on page 365, they talk about the lattice and notice this formula that we used here on page 365 in your Zoom doll text is basically going to be the exact same one that we use when we talk about the Coulomb's law here. Now, combining the idea that the charges and distance determine the force between particles, Coulomb's law was derived. So what you have is you have two different forms of the formula. One, which is measuring the force, which talks in physics, while chemistry, we deal more in the energy. So we have F is the force between two charges, or E is the energy between two charges, R is the distance between the two charges called radius of separation. Q1 and Q2 are the values for the amount of charge in each of the particles. And K is the constant for the particular equation. In this case, for chemistry, we use 2.31 times 10 to the negative 19 joules per nanometer. Now, here should be charge. Okay. Oh, excuse me. So if you look at this particular diagram here, what's happening is we can measure the attractive force between two oppositely charged objects or two oppositely charged particles, or we can measure the repulsive force between two similarly charged particles. Regardless of whether we're measuring the attraction or the repulsion, the example is exactly, the formula that we use is exactly the same. So that's the idea of Coulomb's law, where we can actually measure the amount of force or energy of attraction or repulsion. Now, how do we approach a question like this? So there is a worksheet here. So this would be a typical example question. It says below are shown the photoelectron spectra of the electrons in the second energy level for nitrogen and oxygen. Based on the spectra below, which of the following is best represents the difference in the binding energy of the electrons in nitrogen and oxygen? Now, in this case, you take a look at the binding energy of oxygen. Notice in this case here, the binding energy so is larger on this side, on the right-hand side. So this would be the nucleus. Okay, and you notice for oxygen, it's 3.4 and 1.3, 2.45 and 1.4 for nitrogen. Now, so what would the answer be? So you are have the four choices here. I'll give you a second to take a look at it. All right. And what is the answer? If you look down, the answer is B. Oxygen has more protons than nitrogen has, which in general increases the amount of attractive force on the electron. So because oxygen has more protons than, new, than nitrogen, what happens is that there's a stronger attractive force, okay? Now, what happens is this, but oxygen also has four electrons in the 2b orbitals. With four electrons, two of the electrons must share the same orbital causing an increase in electron-electron repulsion, which offsets the attractive force of the added proton. So in this case, what you have is oxygen here. Notice in this case, this would be the S orbital. Notice it is closer to the nucleus because there is a uh, higher number of protons. 
But in this case, notice the p orbital is a little bit further away because what happens is oxygen in the electron configuration, there's an extra electron in the p orbital, therefore it makes it a little bit more, a uh, little bit more repulsion, and that's why it's a little bit further away. Okay. Now, if you take a look here, it says below is the photoelectron spectrum of carbon. Which of the following is the best explanation for the large difference in binding energy between the peaks on the left and the peaks on the right? Now, notice here the large value here. This would be the nucleus. All right. And so in this case, if we were to take a look at carbon, this would be 1s2. This would be 2s2. And this would be 2p2. Now, which is explained? So again, take a look and see if you can find the correct answer. And so what it is, the correct answer is D. The electrons generating the peak on the left are further from the nucleus and experience greater electron shielding. The peaks on the left are gener generated by the ionization of electrons in the 2s and 2p orbitals. Okay, These electrons are further from the nucleus and are shielded from the attractive force from the nucleus of the nucleus by the electrons in the first orbital. The greater the distance and shielding reduce the Coulombic attraction making it easier to remove the electrons. So basically, because <clears throat> the second energy level is further away from the nucleus, there's a decrease in attractive force. Therefore, it is easier to remove. That's why it has a lower binding energy. Okay. Here's another example you can take a look at. In this particular case, what is the most likely charge that this element would form as an ion? Now, again, what you have here is 105, the large binding energy. So this would be the nucleus. So if we were to take a look, this would be the 2s, oh, sorry, 1s, 2. Here would be the 2s, 2. Here would be the 2p, 6. And here would be the 3s, 1. So because there is one valence electron in the outermost shell, what is the most likely charge? The answer would be C. And that's how we get the C as a plus one charge. Okay. Now, what you, the key thing I would like you to be aware of is are you able to recognize spectra like this? Are you able to interpret the information? Now, what I have is I've given you a spectroscopy reading, okay? And this is part of the package. And if you take a look, if you go through, I think this is page 328. If you scroll down to page, I see here, I believe it's page 335, they do talk, start talking about spectroscopy and what's going on with spectroscopy, all right? The photoelectron spectroscopy starts on page 337. And what they do is they give you some examples, okay? And the key thing is you want to be able to analyze the spectra. Now, in this case, I'm just gonna erase this for a second. One thing that you should be aware of in this particular reading package is the fact that Notice where the binding energy is. In this case, the high binding energy is on the left. And in this case, this would be the nucleus. All right, in my examples I gave you, what happened is, oh, let me get that here. Notice the binding energy, the high point is on the right-hand side. So just something for you to be aware of. So my suggestion would be, as you're going through this, all right, do take a look at the reading package that I included with uh, this topic and go through it. Take a look at some of the examples. 
see how they interpret it. All right, folks, thank you very much. Have a good day. Bye-bye.